Well, hi. Um, thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to uh, tell you a little bit about our paper entitled Acute Declines in GFR and Mortality and Cardiovascular Outcomes in Patients with Heart Failure with Reduced Ejection Fraction. Uh, I'm Wendy McCallum, one of the authors, and I'm a fellow at Tufts Medical Center in Boston. Um, so we understand that baseline reduced levels of GFR are a well-established risk factor for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, or HEFREF. Uh, we also understand that ACE inhibitors reduce mortality in cardiovascular events in patients with HEFREF. What we don't know as well is how um, longitudinal declines in GFR or changes over time um, are related to outcomes, including the setting of uh, starting an ACE inhibitor. So we've observed patients uh, who have HEFREF or in, started on an ACE inhibitor because of the cardiovascular benefits and then their GFR declines after starting the drug, which we all kind of say is hemodynamic, but we don't know how much of a decline can actually be tolerated or still associate with benefit. So we wanted to evaluate uh, for thresholds of EGFR decline after starting ACE inhibitors that were still associated with a cardiovascular benefit in patients with HEFREF. For example, is a 10% decline after starting these medications still beneficial or is a 30% decline still tolerated? Um, we also wanted to see if the benefit of an ACE inhibitor varies based on the degree of decline in GFR. So in other words, is there um, a degree of decline after which the ACE inhibitor is no longer beneficial? Uh, we also wanted to evaluate for the consistency of this benefit um, based on varying assumptions of the hemodynamic effect of the medication, which I will go into a little bit more detail. So we understand that ACE inhibitors um, reduce mortality in patients with HEFREF. So if we make the assumption that this is the benefit that we see, the dashed line in pink or purple, the dashed line for treatment. Um, and on the x-axis, you see the percent change after starting the treatment or the ACE inhibitor. And the blue line, you see placebo. Um, if we, for example, take someone who declines 20% in their GFR after starting the ACE inhibitor, who is actually the appropriate comparator group for this patient? We could compare them to someone who had no decline after starting the ACE inhibitor, um, but this is a little bit unfair. This person who's gonna decline um, is always going to be a slightly sicker uh, patient than the, the person who doesn't decline after the ACE inhibitor. So the comparison seems a little bit unfair. Um, there's probably a lot of residual confounding there that we probably can't really account for properly by just suggesting. But this is kind of the model that we see a lot in observational studies. And in this scenario, the ACE inhibitor is always gonna, or decline after an ACE inhibitor is probably always gonna look bad. If we use randomized control data, you could compare them to um, someone who declined the same degree, so 20% in their EGFR after being randomized to placebo. This is probably also kind of an unfair comparison this 20% decline in placebo is probably all reflective of progression of their intrinsic kidney disease, whereas the 20% after starting an ACE inhibitor, is probably some of it is going to be progression of their kidney disease, and some will actually be the hemodynamic effect of the medication. So this, if you use this as your comparator group, you may overestimate or magnify the benefit of being started on an, on an ACE inhibitor. Um, you could compare them to someone who had 0% decline in their GFR after being started on placebo. Um, this might be the most conservative estimate, so you're going to be presuming that all of that 20% decline in GFR is all a hemodynamic uh, effect of the medication. So this may actually underestimate or give you a conservative view of the benefit of ACE inhibitor. What we think may be the case is somewhere in the middle, somewhere between points A and C is what may be the best estimate. So we'll go into our methods, but we arbitrarily chose 50%. So if you had a 20% decline on ACE inhibitor, you'd be compared to someone who had a 10% decline on placebo. We thought somewhere between A and C would be the best estimate. Um, so we had a little over 6,000 patients from the SOLV trials. These are landmark trials. Uh, looking at the effect of enalapril versus placebo in patients with HEFREF. Um, they had a median two-year follow-up. Our exposure was percent 
GFR change from baseline to two weeks. We also did six weeks um, because patients are still getting their analipo titrated at, at six weeks. Our outcomes were all cause mortality, as well as heart failure hospitalizations. And we use a multivariable Cox proportional hazard regression model adjusted for these covariates. We also evaluated for an interaction between randomization to enalapril or placebo and percent GFR decline. And then we used three models, so kind of bringing in these three reference groups. So in our first model, we used reference point A, so we compared uh, patients with a reference group that had the same degree of GFR decline on placebo so that we called, we referred to as kind of our magnified view of the um, benefit. And we had point C, which was going to be our reference group of 0% change in GFR on placebo. And then third was our intermediate estimate, which was the reference was going to be 50% of decline on placebo. We thought maybe this might be the closest um, thing to the best estimate. Um, so going into our results, uh, this is our first model. So we're comparing patients. Uh, these are hazard ratios of patients on enalapril. Uh, a reference to patients on placebo who had the same degree of decline or de degree of change in their GFR. So you can see that kind of all across the line, um, all across the line, you can see that there's always a benefit associated to enalapril when you compare them to patients in the placebo group that had the same degree of, of change in their GFR. It really didn't matter how much your GFR declined, you're always having a, a mortality benefit. And when we looked um, for the interaction, the interaction term was not, um, not significant. We looked at heart failure hospitalization. It's even more of a benefit associated with uh, being randomized to enalapril when you compare them to someone randomized to placebo with the same degree of GFR change. And again, the interaction term was not significant. When we look into the other models, so this is our most conservative estimate where we had the reference group is always 0% change with placebo. So um, the dark line, the dark black line is uh, their hazard ratios for the enalapril group. The gray is for placebo group. And the diamond represents the reference group of placebo, no change. And so you can see the threshold is slightly different. It was up to a 10% decline on enalapril was still associated with a, um, a benefit mortality benefit when compared to 0% change on placebo. You can see that you know, even if you patients are declining up to 30, 40%, there's never a point where um, being randomized to enalapril was uh, significantly harmful uh, in terms of mortality. And this was our intermediate estimate. So our reference group was 50% change on placebo. You can see here the threshold that we saw was about a 15% decline on enalapril. It was still um, associated with significant benefit for all-cause mortality in this estimate. Um, when we looked at it for a heart failure hospitalization, so again, this is a conservative estimate, um, up to a 35% decline on enalapril was associated with a significant benefit um, for heart failure hospitalization. And then for intermediate model, and up to a 40% decline on enalapril was still associated with a significant um, benefit against heart failure hospitalization um, in this model. When we repeated everything at six weeks, we had basically the same sort of results. So I do want to mention some limitations. There's no formal protocol to adjust the enalapril dosing in the trial, so it is possible that some uh, patients were getting dose reductions or dose adjustments based on the GFR that they saw at testing. Um, this is an outpatient trial, so the results really are limited to the outpatient setting. We can't really extrapolate them to acute declines in kidney function while hospitalized. And again, it's an observational study, and so it's, it's susceptible to all the unmeasured and residual confounding that comes with that. But in conclusion, so with patients with HEFREF, ACE inhibitors decrease the risk of mortality and heart failure hospitalizations when compared to placebo. The benefit, especially for heart failure hospitalizations, persisted even with a moderate reduction in GFR after starting the ACE inhibitor. Um, and so we conclude that in the outpatient setting, patients with HEFREF, 
there should be compelling reasons beyond just the acute decline in GFR to withdraw this beneficial class of medications. Um, and with that, I'd 